Two weeks ago, I started these kale seeds. As you can see, they're growing nicely. Now, we need to make some changes to their living situation. Each cube has room for only one full-grown plant, so we need to make some hard choices about which seedlings get to live and which die. It's not my fault, it's how nature works. We also need to find a new home for the chosen ones because we want them to have plenty of room to grow and thrive. Let's get to it. They know, they know I'm fortunate now. This is Hydro Solo, a show about growing veggies indoors using hydroponic techniques. No sun or land needed. Please subscribe if this tickles your toot hole. Now, back to content. The good news is more than one seed per cube achieved germination. The bad news is we need to select only one from each cube to survive and thrive. How can we possibly make such a hard choice? It might help to know why. You see, like the unfuckable billionaire tech bros who believe they need to dominate Earth to get girls to want to have sex with them, plants are greedy. They want all the space and light and resources and shit all to themselves. So we need to move every obstacle we can out of their way, even if we have to eliminate the competition. Now, if we could only do the same with the tech bros, the hard part is deciding which need to go and which will stay. Well, it's easier than you think. Just answer two simple questions. Which one looks the healthiest? Because looks are everything. Of this group here, this one looks the healthiest. If it's too hard to tell, ask which one seems further along. Like this group, this one's already getting its real leaves. Now that we've made our selections, it's time to terminate the losers. You have two options. Clip with pruners below the lowest leaves. Make sure your clippers are clean to avoid introducing disease. Or you can carefully hand yank them out. Be careful here not to accidentally pull the chosen one out because their roots are kind of intermingled within the cube. Congrats, survivors. That idiot Darwin would be proud. Now we need to get them to a new home. I'm a goddamn professional software engineer, so I tend to view problems through the lens of systems. The simpler the system, the better, but never at the cost of effectiveness. I've tried many hydroponic systems, deep water culture, flood and drain, nutrient film, beta buckets. They're all stupidly complex. The method I always default to is simple, easy to set up and maintain, and most important, wildly effective. It's a simple technique called sub-irrigation. It allows me to grow individual plants in their own container, which can be moved around and is easily disposed of when finished. And for the most part, it's very low maintenance. Here's what you need. A grow bag, this one is three gallons. Cocoa core in this case, but any gardening soil will do. A porous reservoir, like this thing called a Oya, O-L-L-A. And of course, the star of the show, a kale seedling nestled in its little synthetic cube. Let's assemble. Hydrate the cocoa core. Fill the grow bag with the cocoa core to just below the rim. This is a special reservoir that's porous, meaning water can seep out of it over time. It's called an Oya, spelled O-L-L-A. Insert the reservoir offset from the center, then insert our seedling cube, Finally, place the complete unit under grow lights or in the sun. Would you look at that? Gaze upon its beauty, America. The only maintenance required now is to fill the reservoir with water and nutrients about every week. Maybe more as the plant matures and gets bigger. And that's all I got. Go to hydrosolo.com for great stuff and to jump on our new and improved mailing list. Blow up the comments with all your problems and frustrations and questions and whatever. And tell me what you had for dinner last night. Unless it was anything other than hot dogs. Only comment on your dinner if you had hot dogs last night. Let me know how they were. See you next time for more great content to fill your eye holes with America.